Hi, David Bizard here, and you're watching Paratech 10. In this episode, and it will be up in the corner there, whatever that is, I'm going to talk about ignition systems, namely the MSD-6, I guess it would be, and I need you now to think about whether it's the good, the bad, or the ugly. Because I was using an MSD ignition system that cost me first place in an international race. I'd already set the lap record. I'd like to mention that Carol Shelby and I both got ripped off by the same con man. And the story behind that is like this. I heard from uh, the um, ex-Cosworth cam designer, uh, my friend John that is, that they had tested an ignition system at Cosworth that boosted the power of the uh, DFV engine, that's the one that uh, won them all those races in Formula One and Indy. It boosted the power by about 11 or 12 horsepower. And uh, it was rather unique in the way it worked. But they decided not to use it. Why was that? Well, the story goes something like this. This ignition system was so powerful that if the F1 car had a crash and the chassis was still live, the first track marshal to touch it would be electrocuted. Sounds rather a powerful ignition system. Well, through hook and by crook, we actually managed to get hold of not the, quite the type that Cosworth was using, but one of the previous prototypes. In other words, we got hold of one that supposedly wasn't as good. I can't remember how we got it, but it was, it was legit. We got it, I believe, from the inventor of it, who we never met. Anyway, this was 1974 and I was trying to eke out every single horsepower out of my uh, Chrysler Avenger, right? It was disgustingly fast for a, a non-factory uh, car. I was one of the few privateers in the British Touring Car Championship. Anyway, we had this ignition system and we thought we'd just see how far it would throw a spark. And this was when we were on, testing on O'Selly's Dino in England. That's just outside of, uh, O'Selly's just outside of Oxford. Anyway, the thing was, it threw a spark like a bolt of lightning. And I'm not talking about a spark this big. The spark was so big, we could fire a gap of something in the order of two feet. And when it fired, it made this horrific bang, literally like a bolt of, well, it was a bolt of lightning, a small one. And the boss, the guy that owned O'Selly, heard this down in his cell. Sorry, he heard it down in his office from the dino cell. And he honestly had thought somebody was firing guns up there. That's how loud it was. And he was probably 30 yards away from it in his office and several rooms away. Anyway, we tested this ignition and sure enough it gave us some horsepower but only when we used it with very, very cold plugs. We finally got the best results when we used a, a surface discharge plug as is often used in outboard motors. We ended up not using the system because of the same reason that Cosworth didn't use it. Uh, we suspected anyone 
who might touch the chassis of the car after I'd driven it into something might just get a very, very nasty electric shock. Now, what happened then, now let me think about this, this is a long time ago, 1974, is that the guy that invented this system got teamed up by a guy that ended up being one of the most cunning con man we've come across in a long time. And he decided that he could sell a slightly detuned version of this and so he did. He started a company that uh, uh, started selling these ignition systems safer and de in a detuned form. Still worked very well. Basically what happened was is it fired the ignition then it put a huge current across the spark plug so that you had like a arc welder and it continued to burn for about 80 degrees of crankshaft rotation, right? And, and it literally was a huge flaming ball of plasma. Anyway, um, but that's not the story that I'm gonna tell here. At this point, we didn't have one other than the test one. But at the same time, I was doing a test on MSDs, uh, what became their 6AL. And here's how it cost me a race. Are you still thinking about whether this is good, bad, or ugly? Because you need to, because it's not going to turn out good. Anyway, here's the deal. We tested our MS6, and it was one of the early ones, and I suspect in 1974, because they knew I was going to test it, it was specifically built with component quality checks in it because they didn't want to ship this across the Atlantic and have it tested by a guy who was the most read journalist in Europe and say it's a piece of junk. So I suspect that it was the very best MSD6 or MSD6 prototype they could have. So we tested this on Ocelli's dyno and sure enough it worked just fine. We picked up somewhere around about three horsepower, right? Now, that doesn't sound a lot, but races are won by the aggregate of a number of small changes that each produce a small increase. So, a horsepower here and a horsepower there, and two horsepower somewhere else and a half of one here. That doesn't sound like much at any one step, but the point is this. You make 20 of those increases and suddenly you find your 15 to 20 horsepower up on your opposition, which when you're running just a 1600 cc engine is a heck of a, an amount to be up by. Anyway, back to the story. Our race was Alton Park. On Wednesday, we dyno out our engine and it made killer horsepower. I mean, it was not only way up there, it was over the top. And uh, so we installed it in the car and I put the ignition on and uh, ran all good wires to it. Uh, and we had the car ready for Friday, which was qualifying. So we drove up to, uh, to Alton Park, got there early in the morning, unrolled the car from the trailer, and we got talking to uh, Winston Percy. Now, um, I knew Wynn Percy from the days when I used to build his uh, engine for him, for his, uh, uh, I guess you'd call it rally cross, right? And he was a winning driver. He was well named, Wynn Percy, right? And uh, uh, at the time he was leading the British Touring Car Championship and he was driving a um, uh, Supra. And Pretty much they were dominating the scene. Well, we finally got our good engine in, right? Now remember, we're an amateur team and we're taking on professional teams. Each one of them with an engineer, such as you get in cup car. Warp, please note. We got there and I said to him, well, Wynn, we're gonna beat you today. And he laughed and he says, yeah, right. 
Well, after practice, we'd set joint pole position. And Wynn came over to see us and he said, that was a pretty good run. Do you think you could manage to pull that off in the race? And I said, well, Wynn, you got to look at it this way. We didn't run a flat out lap in qualifying. That was our break-in lap. And he said, yeah, right. He says, I know about your, um, uh, your um, uh, psychological racing. I said, sure enough, it was. And I said, look, I'll tell you what. 100 pounds that you're looking at my exhaust pipe by the first corner. And I mean, looking up it. That doesn't mean that I'm slightly ahead of you. No, you can see up my exhaust pipe from where I am to where you are. And he says, no, I don't want to take your money. And my crew chief, Colin, great crew chief, right? I would not have done as well in, in the uh, series as I did without my crew. And that was Colin and Hugh, right? Both of them were brilliant crew guys. Anyway, Colin leaps up, fishes out his wallet, and he says, please take my money. 100 pounds says you're looking up David's exhaust and he says no 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 he says, uh, he says make it 10 pounds right now this is 1974 so 100 pounds would have been probably close to around about 800 to a thousand dollars so 10 pounds would have been 80 to 100 bucks right anyway comes the race Get ready for the start. Flag comes down. At the first corner, he's looking at my exhaust pipe. I've beaten him to the first corner, which is only about 100 yards away, and I'm already about four cars lengths in front of him. By about lap 10, I'm a half a lap in front of him. Right, now this is the guy that subsequently wins the Touring Car Championship. I'm about a half a lap in front of him, so I'm on the back part of the track and I, out of the corner of my eye, I catch his car at the first corner after the start finish line, up in the air, probably 25 feet from the ground, and I'm looking at the underside of it. Uh, there used to be a bank on that corner. It's not there now. I've watched some videos and it's not there. But there used to be a bank on it. He hit that bank and it propelled that car probably 40 or 50 feet into the air. And my first thought is, Jesus Christ, that's going to be bad. Well, you cannot believe how relieved I was when I finished that lap came over the start finish line and saw him standing on the bank and he waved at me and gave me two thumbs up which told me he was all right but anyway so off I go and I'm racing on and I, I, I can't remember how many laps we had to do it's probably 50 or 60 right uh, and uh, I'm setting a cracking pace here so I uh, when I come up to uh, lap the guy that's in second place I can't remember who that was I back off and I think well you know winning is winning I don't have to show everybody up this bad but as the day went on it got hotter and, and I thought wait a minute when I come into a corner I'm, am I detecting a misfire here right and uh, I was misfire got worse and worse and my immediate reaction is it only does it in the corners so probably something wrong with the carburetor now in a British touring car event you don't have time for a pit stop you stop in the pits and you, nine times out, no 99 times out of a hundred you've just given away whatever good chance you had of winning well, I was so far in front of the next guy, right, that we came into the pits, checked the fuel level and the float bowls for leakage or anything like that, which may cause fuel surge, and went back out without losing first place. 
That's how far up I was, right? Anyway, the misfire got worse and worse. And eventually, I got caught. Can't remember who by. Right? Anyway, so while we were putting the car on the tra trailer, um, we had the hood off because we were still trying to find out where this misfire was. And the trailer was on a piece of ground that was uneven. And as I came up the ramp, so Colin, my crew chief, noticed that the coil wire from the MSD to the body swung slightly. The insulation got hot under the hood. And as it heated up, it got softer and it moved. And the spark went from the coil wire, the high tension coil wire to the body. That was our misfire. If our MSD hadn't have been quite so damn good, I would have won that race. End of story. <laughs>